Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to dive into one of the most compelling aspects of Michael Jordan's legendary career, and that's his greatest victims. Now, we all know MJ is widely considered the GOAT, but what truly sets him apart is the way he dominated his opponents. Some of the best players and coaches in the NBA fell victim to Jordan's relentless competitive spirit, and today we're going to break down the biggest victims MJ had throughout his career. So let's get into it. First up on our list is Craig Elo. If there's one player who's forever linked with a single unforgettable moment in Jordan's career, it's Elo. As one of the leaders of the Cleveland Cavaliers in the late 80s, Elo was often tasked with guarding MJ. And while Elo was a solid defender, it just wasn't good enough. Jordan averaged around 34 points per game against him, but what really cements Elo's place in history is of course the shot. In the 1989 playoffs with time running out, Jordan sank the series winning jumper right over Elo, breaking the hearts of Cav fans and etching that moment into NBA lore forever. Next, let's talk about Dan Majerli, a three-time NBA All-Star and a key player for the Phoenix Suns during their run in the early 90s. Known as Thunder Dan, Majerli was a sharpshooter and respected defender. But when it came to facing Michael Jordan in the 1993 NBA Finals, all of that went out the window. The Suns fell to the Bulls in six games and Majerli's defense was no match for MJ. What makes this matchup even more interesting is that Michael had a little extra motivation. He knew that Bulls GM Jerry Krause was a big fan of Majerli. As MJ put it in the last dance, and I quote, Just because Krause liked him was enough for me. You think he's a great player? Okay, fine. You think he's a great defender? I'm going to show you he's not. And that's exactly what he did. Byron Russell is another player whose name will forever be linked to one of MJ's iconic moments. Russell had the misfortune of trash-talking Jordan during his rookie year, right when MJ was in the middle of his first retirement. Needless to say, it was a bad idea. Jordan never forgot that, and when they faced off in the 1998 NBA Finals, MJ made sure Russell paid for his words. The image of Jordan hitting the last shot over Russell in Game 6 to secure the Bulls' sixth championship is one of the most famous moments in sports history, and it's safe to say that Russell will never live it down. Clyde Drexler, one of the most talented players of his generation, also fell victim to Jordan's competitive fire. Drexler was a legit superstar, and MJ even acknowledged him as a threat. But when people started comparing Drexler to Jordan, that lit a fire under MJ like nothing else. In the 1992 NBA Finals, Drexler and the Portland Trailblazers ran into the Bulls, and it was clear who the better player was. Jordan took that matchup personally, outplaying Drexler and leading the Bulls to another championship. Now, let's shift gears to the only coach on this list, and that's Jeff Van Gundy. Van Gundy made the mistake of publicly criticizing Jordan, claiming that MJ befriends opponents just to soften them up before destroying them on the court. Well, Jordan didn't take too kindly to that. When his Bulls faced Van Gundy's Knicks, Jordan made it his mission to torch New York and teach them a lesson. And that's exactly what he did. Van Gundy's comments only fueled Jordan's fire, and it's a prime example of why you should never give MJ extra motivation. Speaking of the Knicks, let's not forget about John Starks. Starks was a fierce competitor and a key player for those tough Knicks teams in the 90s. He had his moments against Jordan, but MJ usually got the best of him. One of the most memorable instances was the famous double nickel game, where Michael Jordan dropped 55 points at Madison Square Garden in 1995. Starks was one of the primary defenders that night, and despite his efforts, he was no match for MJ's greatness. Next up is Dikembe Mutombo, the legendary shop locker known for his signature finger wag. Matumbo once challenged Jordan, saying MJ had never dunked on him. 
Well, Jordan makes sure to rectify that later that season. Not only did he dunk on Matumbo, but he also gave him the famous finger wag right back. Lessons learned, never trash talk MJ. And finally, we have Tony Kukoc. Before Kukoc joined the Bulls, he was a rising star in Europe, and Bulls GM Jerry Krause couldn't stop raving about him. This didn't sit well with Jordan, especially since it came right after the Bulls' first three-peat. During the 1992 Olympics, MJ and Scottie Pippen made it their mission to shut down Kukoc in their matchup against Croatia. They succeeded, completely overwhelming Kukoc and showing Kraus that there is no comparison between this new prospect the Bulls had and their existing stars. So there you have it, the biggest victims of Michael Jordan. These players and coaches learned the hard way what it meant to face off against the greatest of all time. MJ didn't just beat his opponents, he dominated them, leaving a lasting impact on their careers and the history of the NBA. But who do you think suffered the most at the hands of MJ? Let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more upcoming videos and NBA content. My name is Damian Peters, as always thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.